Hello and welcome to our third exhibit in the series of virtual storytelling of Wayne County memories. I'm Paul Sailors, local history assistant at the Wayne County Public Library in Goldsboro. In continuation with our successful Change the World programs, which featured three powerful women from Goldsboro that rose to the forefront of women's rights and civil rights, we have been exploring the Goldsboro Women's Club and various other women's benevolent societies in Goldsboro, the Wayne County Public Library's history, and finally, the Red Path Chautauqua Institution. We will follow the thread that these powerful women wove through Goldsboro's rich tapestry and their influence on Goldsboro's cultural and civic atmosphere. Next slide. First, we'd like to thank and recognize a few organizations that have made this possible. The Wayne County Public Library received a North Carolina Cares Humanities Relief Grant from the North Carolina Humanities Council. Council. Funding for North Carolina Cares has been provided by the National Endowment for the Humanities as a part of the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Cares Act. Chautauqua is a name that not too many people recognize these days in the South. It is still in existence and it originates, its name originates rather, in North Carolina. I've divided Chautauqua up into phases to help understand it better. Phase one, I'm calling Mother Chautauqua. It's on Lake Chautauqua in New York, upstate New York, and it started in 1874. Chautauqua was an adult educational program established in 1874 by leaders of the Methodist Episcopal Church on the shores of Lake Chautauqua in western New York near Lake Erie. Two years prior, Methodist minister John Vincent began training Sunday school teachers in an outdoor summer school format on the lake. It grew in popularity and became known as the Chautauqua Institute. It grew further and was nicknamed the Mother Chautauqua as a daughter Chautauqua developed as a smaller but permanent facility in rural towns around the United States. In 1904, a third tier of Chautauqua evolved into a traveling or circuit Chautauqua, often called tent Chautauquas. Phase two of Chautauqua, the name Chautauqua, has its origins in Eastern North Carolina. William Powell of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, in his Encyclopedia of North Carolina, explains the term briefly. The term Chautauqua originated in North Carolina. It had been the name of the Tuscarora Indian village, Chatuka, where the town of Newburn arose following the arrival of Swiss settlers in 1710. John Lawson reports in his book, The History of North Carolina, published in England in 1709, I quote, about 20 families of Noose Indians had claimed it for their village which was situated on the tip of the peninsula-like projection into the Trent and Noose rivers. After the Tuscarora Indian War, the Tuscaroras migrated to New York soon after and took the name with them. You can see on the map from 1709 on the right, the name Chautauqua is underlined in red. That is the peninsula where Newburn is today. John Vincent was an American educator and religious leader. He was instrumental in establishing the Chautauqua Lectures, an important means of adult education in 19th century America. John Vincent was born in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and at the age of five moved with his parents to Pennsylvania in 1837. By 1849, he was licensed to preach in the Methodist Episcopal Church and in 1851 he became a ministerial circuit rider in three states. Mr. Vincent became a minister at Trinity Church in Chicago in 1865 where he established and edited journals aimed at improving education in the church. He was reassigned to New York and for 20 years was a leader of the American Sunday School movement. Vincent created the Sunday School Assembly at a campsite on Lake Chautauqua, New York. It was hugely successful 
and soon abandoned denominational concerns in favor of general cultural studies with strong infusions of morality and inspiration. The family vacation atmosphere attracted thousands of visitors from all corners of the U.S. Those unable to make the pilgrimage to New York were served after 1878 by the Chautauqua Literary and Scientific Circles, or the CLSC, a home reading and correspondence course that followed a four-year curriculum designed by Vincent himself. The circles were instantly popular and filled a need not met by the classically oriented colleges. In 1881, the Chautauqua School of Theology was chartered and in 1883, the Chautauqua University, with Vincent as Chancellor, was created. But the public appetite was ravenous. Another camp was started in Ohio, and by 1900, fully 200 pavilions had been established in 31 states, bringing lectures by the period's most eminent scholars and statesmen to households. Phase 3. Social Confidence the Wheel Ladies organized a Chautauqua Circle in 1892. In a letter from Mina Wheel to her daughter Gertrude in April of 1900, she writes, The New South lacked the first family hierarchy of the Old South, and small towns were less exclusionary. The Wheel men took leadership roles at the synagogue and in the community, while the Wheel women formed benevolent societies and the Hebrew Orphan's Home. A Chautauqua Circle was formed in 1892, and its six members were all Jewish. Mina and Sarah Wheel leading the way with other society women to follow. Many meetings were held in the Opera House on the corner of Center Street and Chestnut Street. They studied Germanic and Scandinavian poems that ranged in dates from about 1200 to the late 1700s. The Women's Club of Goldsboro organized officially in March of 1899, and on the first page of the Mental Culture Department above, in the meeting minutes, on October 3rd, 1901, the first sentence reads, The first regular Chautauqua meeting after summer vacation was held in the club room October 3rd, with Miss Mary Borden presiding. Miss Mabel Borden was recording secretary and she goes on to say, it was urged by those who had visited the Chautauqua Summer School that our circle have a name, a circle flower, and a motto in order that we might have the best possible choice in the matter. Each member was told to bring in at the next meeting whatever name, flower, and motto she thought best. The women decided at the following meeting on October 10, 1901, not to have a motto and flower, but decided on a name, the Old North State Circle. They started receiving Chautauqua Magazine, CSLS, and had decided to take up a class from the CSLS. By 1902, they were studying the war in Mexico, Poland in the 19th century, Imperial Germany, modern England, Italian poetry, just to name a few. In the April through September Chautauquan magazine, Goldsboro was featured twice in recognition for its traveling library and book reception. It reads, the Old North State Chautauqua Circle of Goldsboro, North Carolina, holding the unique position of being the daughter of a woman's club has as its adopted child the, li the traveling library, the only one in the state. Phase 4, the Red Path Chautauqua, bringing Chautauqua to Goldsboro, 1914. The apex of Wayne County cultural life was Chautauqua in the early 1900s. Red Path Chautauqua was a traveling road show which presented Shakespeare, opera, poetry, and other cultural edifications throughout the United States. The picture featured here is the corner of Ormond Street and Chestnut Streets, downtown Goldsboro. It's on Courthouse Square. It's the southeast corner of Ormond, 
and Chestnut Streets. The next slide shows the current view of that corner. That corner was where Chautauqua set up their Red Path tent. The Chautauqua company is still in existence today, though it no longer travels. With the success of the CLSC, many new Chautauquas were created, known as Daughter Chautauquas, giving rise to what was called the Chautauqua Movement. This picture is on Ormond Street looking south towards Chestnut Street. This is the view today. Some years later, the talent agencies that provided speakers and entertainers for these platforms put together shows of their own which traveled to small towns across the United States and Canada. These were known as the Circuit Chautauquas or Tent Chautauquas. This picture is from 1914. It is of a family who decorated their car for the Chautauqua Parade that often ran down Center Street. They would parade down Center Street and take a left on to Chestnut Street on the way to the tent. There were loads of ads like these in the Goldsboro Daily Argus. You could buy a week pass or a day pass. On the right, you will see a schedule for Red Path Chautauqua Week, May 17th through the 24th of 1917. At the very top is Miss Julia Clausen. She was a mezzo-soprano opera singer who trained at the Royal Swedish Academy of Music. She is pictured here in the center of this slide. She was a naturalized citizen of the U.S. and sang at the Royal Swedish Opera for nine years, Chicago, Covent Garden, Metropolitan Opera, Carnegie Hall, and Goldsboro. Thank you for joining me again in our third series of Wayne County Memories.